We're back. <laughs> Where did we leave off? Where were we? So, Andrew is about to get into a. About to drop some knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Get ready for some fucking mashed potato mouth marbles here. First time be great. fucking. Don't worry, the word judiciary doesn't come up at all. So <laughs> hey, you nailed it there. You nailed you it. have it. This is the pressure is off. Now I'm going to fuck all these words up. So uh, we'll go back to fuck, I'm gonna, um, coin up. Remember the website coin up? Yeah, we'll bring it back. We've, we've mentioned because it. there's going to be another post on this coin app, coin up messaging board. What? One done by a Mr. Stephen Roach. Stephen Roach. His post goes, I think it's about time I laid this to rest. However, entertaining the speculation, my name is Stephen Roach, who is primarily based in the Czech Republic. Zina Slotion was a company set up by myself and several other mainly amateur programmers in 1978 that worked on component parts for printed circuit boards that saw programming as a limited but very profitable sideline. I think the fact that it wasn't the focal point of our business took the pressure off, and hence we created some quality work, which quickly gained a reputation within the industry. We were approached around 1980 by a Southern American company that shall remain nameless for legal uh, purposes to develop an idea that had for producing an arcade game with a puzzle element that centered around a new approach to video game graphics. They were very keen indeed to gain an upper hand in what was already a very competitive market. So we offered a staggering commission-based uh, remuneration package. Remuneration. I looked at that word and I said, there's no fucking way I'm going to be able to say that, bro. <laughs> it. Fuck yeah. So <laughs> a commission-based based remuneration project to develop something special that utilized the technology. We developed the game in little more than two Porta cabins. That's a word. That were the knocked cabin. together where we spent most, many uh, stressful mornings, evenings, and nights, which was, which fine. Okay, hold on. We developed the game in a little more than two porta cabins that were knocked together where we spent many stressful mornings, evenings, and nights, which was a great pity because it compromised our relaxed and innocently amateur approach to our business in spite of the financial possibilities. Merrick Vas... Vat, oh, Are we an ad here or what? V-A-C-H-O-U-S-E-C-E-K. <laughs> People fucking roast Merrick Vasuk. Well, that's a hard <laughs> fucking last name to say, you dipshit. It's not photography. <laughs> That's Fuck you. True. He's got you there. You know what? We're going to stop at his first name. Merrick was the programmer who came up with the name Polybius. He had studied Greek mythology at Merceric, fuck's sake, university and came up with the name because it sounded quite bold and mysterious, which is what we wanted to, to, um, to portray simply. The inspired graphics combined the puzzle elements and gameplay that was something to behold. We play-tested it for hours, and it was certainly very addictive. It was well-loved professionally and recreationally with everyone who played it. The company couldn't have been happier, and we all thought we were on the verge of something very special indeed. We then received a phone call stating that there were concerns within the company that the basic graphics, which featured prominently in so many of other games of the time, were fine for the average gamer to spend hours at a time without any noticeable physical or mental detriments. But the intense and engrossing gameplay of this new step was very much unknown. So the game was put back several months due to divided opinions within the board directors. Much to our consternation for breaking our backs to finish on time, we received heartening collated significant oh fuck that we we received heartening collated playtesting figures and were then told that the game would receive a temporary limited release which buoyed us to significantly but shortly after that doesn't sound right 
um, we received the terrible news. A 13-year-old boy from the Lloyd District of Portland, Oregon, had suffered an epileptic fit while playing the game, only six, di six days after the machines had literally been insult installed. One of the senior employees that I knew very well contacted me to tell me that it caused immense ripples of panic throughout the company who were of the opinion that they had created a monster. It may sound Shit. laughable now, but please bear in mind that this was 25 years ago when the video game in in industry was still in infancy. Every effort was made to withdraw the game from the public domain as quickly as possible. But the scaremongering was already out in full force, and a lot of the children were queuing up for a, up or daring their friends to play the supposedly nightmarish game. Company directors descended on our town to assess the situation, which may account for the reports of strange men in black suits hanging around, and the machines were often taken in daylight, causing minor but noticeable incidents. As far as I was made aware, only seven machines were distributed around the area, and no other health-related incidents were reported. I heard, of the, I heard off the record that the company made a one-off settlement with the boy's family, and no one was heard apart from all the internet-based speculation and resulting in paranoia. We disbanded Sinus Lotion shortly afterwards because we didn't want to restrict ourselves to the stringent deadlines of the companies and favor distancing ourselves from the game in any case of any lingering recriminations, which could have gone a great deal or could have done a great deal of damage to our personal and professional lives. This was extremely important to us. As far as I'm aware, no ROMs or otherwise, otherwise exist unless they remain in the bowels of the company that distributed it. We only received a basic... Flip the page. Flip the page. Pause for dramatic effect here. Basic payment in view of the fact that the game was withdrawn without nationwide or international distribution. So we grew to loathe it, and it was often a curse word whenever we used to meet up and still is today, which is a shame. I still believe we created something that should have changed the face of gaming and would have set us apart from the rest of the industry, but arcade games were often compared to drugs at the time because of their addictiveness, and we created something that small-minded bureaucrats perceived to be heroin of the video game world. That's only crime was to be many years ahead of its time. I'm sure people will doubt the sincerity of this and feel free to drop me a line at stephenroach at yahoo.com as I'm happy to answer any questions. Stephen. So you heard that. Stephen Roach at yahoo.com. Any questions? Hit this guy up. Stephen I'm Roach. He was actually interviewed by a fucking legit reporter and did one on the record, supposedly. Uh I, I, yeah, I, I think you're talking about Stuart Brown of Ahoy, who did the the documentary. Stuart Brown, right? Who did the? He tra he tracked down the person, uh, the user who claimed to be uh, Stephen Roach, and uh, apparently asked him about his statements about Polybius, and uh, was told that all of it is completely fabricated. What? That entire, no, no, that's the, a different one. The, the guy bullshit. that the, the interviewer that did interview him said he he answered a bunch of questions and said it's legit. This is a real email as well. I emailed it just for shits and giggles, and the email didn't get bounced back. <laughs> I so. mean, yes, it could be a real email. Anybody can set up really? a real email. <laughs> Listen, Dan, it's a real it's a real email. I could set up a real email. It's way above my pay grade. Sure. I mean, my friend do it in grade buddy, You installed a hard drive. You can do an email. Yeah, you can I have faith in you. Yeah. The world's, uh, the world's uh, also, also because this is mainly an audio podcast, and people think that he, uh, Andrew was just doing foley work with the with the pages, like he didn't actually like just two blank pages. No, 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 no. Andrew no, prints no, no, out no, no. his notes. That Andrew prints out his notes physically so you can read them. So he can read them. Yeah. yeah what's wrong with that? Nothing. I'm just. I'm just. And keeping one in front of me, Dan. You know, make sure people understand. Andrew doesn't print them out. A friend of a friend of his prints them out at yeah, work. Oh, yeah, on company time. <laughs> I don't even have a printer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Just to be clear about that. <laughs> so, as well, as far as the documentary Polybius, the video game that doesn't exist by Stuart Brown, uh, is concerned, he said that he talked to 
this Stephen Roach or the user that claimed to be Stephen Roach. And he said that this entire thing is fabricated. And for me, the thing, the one thing that, that sticks out about this whole, the, the whole thing is when the guy talks about the game. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.